Well, it's my pleasure to present Dr. Walter Robb. Uh, I've heard him speak on a number of occasions, and um, uh, I guess I heard you at the museum. You've been over there talking, gave a talk over there. You're into uh, research, you're, re you're into business, you're into taking risks. <laughs> Tell me what, why you wrote that book. I was concerned that the corporate world was becoming risk adverse. Adverse, they just don't want to take risks? Right. Okay. Now, the media people and Facebooks, those young people are taking great risks. They certainly are. But the big corporate companies are more apt to buy a startup to get a new technology than invent it in a laboratory. Rather than do it themselves, okay. And I was concerned that even the laboratories had great scientists who were war working hard, but they were programmed and budgeted and per diagram and directed so much they couldn't think out of the box. They didn't have time to come up with the kind of breakthroughs. Well, it takes money, of course, to do research. And if you can cut cut the corners, that's what they're doing, right? Well, I'm afraid that the culture was to buy a startup. And yeah. I love startups. Well, could you, you're involved with a number of startup <laughs> companies. Right. But I know that a startup is only half as effective as the same research done in a good corporate laboratory. Where they have the money to... And the to poor CEO spends most of his time raising money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're always missing the tool, the instrument that they could use to be really productive. And in, in a big laboratory, it would be there. Exactly. Well, I, as I'm a pharmacist, so I know what goes into research for pharmaceutical companies, and that takes a lot of of money to, to but do this that as well. book turned out not to just be about corporate work, but starting out at age eight, I think I began taking risks to get jobs. And I had the best jobs in my town because I was aggressive. You were aggressive. And, ask. and you weren't afraid. That's right. And I could take no and come back. <laughs> and I had great schooling, great teachers who gave me opportunities that were challenges. And that you do need a challenge, don't you? And I always took them up yeah. on it. It makes you stronger, I think. It, it, it gives you the, um, the feeling that you can take on another challenge. Absolutely. And another one. You can yes. get bigger and bigger with it. And I'll tell you, I made the job easier for teachers. For teachers? And I got real good recommendations when I wanted to go to college it's or get a job. Because of that, because sure. they said, yeah. yeah. And you need those recommendations. Absolutely. Now, you, you, ha you, you worked for General Electric, of 42 course. 42 years. 42 years, and you knew Jack Welsh. Right. You know, I mean, you knew, and you have patents as well. Is that correct? Yes, but uh, unfortunately, none that made me famous. You know what? You make a pa if you have a patent for GE, it, it's owned by GE, too. <laughs> so it's nothing you can take home to the bank, really. Right. Yeah, but uh, it gives you that opportunity. And I know that this book is out, and I read a couple of reviews, and and people say you, it's a must read. <laughs> it's a must read. Where would you get this book? Open door bookstore. Open door bookstore. Amazon, or you can Google. Taking risks with Rob. Yep, I saw that. There's another Rob that owns a Whole Foods or something. I and a Walter Rob, too. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I said, what is this? This is not the right Rob. That's right. We have a different <laughs> middle initial. Exactly. Maybe you could teach him a few lessons. Who knows? But, um, but writing a book, what made you write the book? You Just to kind of get your feelings out to yes, the book. right. So people would be... A, 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 a More productive. Right. Now, you've worked with, uh, you talked about CT scans and PET scans. Right. It was interesting because um, my, my physician, which I'll tell you, is Dr. Oldendorf. 
So when I went to him, he says, you know, my dad. Bill, oh, uh, I know him. In, he says, out in, in California, California, he said, did all this work on those. And so I'm going to your lecture, and you said, oh, and there's Dr. Oldendorf. I go, oh, my gosh, that's my doctor's father. And he should have gotten a Nobel Prize along with the people that did get it for the CT scan. That's what, that's what, uh, because he did all the pioneering work on it. Well, three people. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, but he worked, worked at that, at the pioneering at level. At the very early days. Yeah, yeah. Right. But that was so funny when you mentioned his name, I'd go, because, you know, somebody uh, tells you, you know, my dad did this, and I go, oh, yeah, that was really nice. But when you said it, I said, well, there was credibility there. <laughs> he was big. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you, you've met a lot of people in your life. Who, who would you say was the most influential in your life? Every teacher uh, I had. I had great parents and great teachers. But the greatest teacher of all was Jack Welsh. <laughs> <laughs> because I reported to him for 20 years. Most teachers... It was maybe yeah, two well, years. Yeah, a year or two. Three they, years, that, they were gone. And 20 yeah. years. Yeah. Is a yeah. Long time. Well, he certainly made a name for himself with, with General Electric. And I'm sure you've seen so many changes with the General Electric and how they're, you know, they're doing the, the, the battery or the plant, you know, the, all, the cell plant. And all. there's so many things going on. I can't imagine what it's like to be in business in this day and age when you have competition and you're, we've gone international. Oh, yeah. And that's made a big change. In, well, and we see times, it in the stock market, don't we now? Many times you have to manufacture in the country to be able to sell there. Oh, that's the reason. So we had CT scanner. We wanted to sell in China. And it's all government controlled. And they said, well, you put an X-ray factory here and we'll buy we'll your buy, scanners. Yeah. Yeah, they. I mean, they're not. They're not foolish. They understand. <laughs> in a way, we should be doing that here. <laughs> you know, you want to sell it here, make it here. Right? <laughs> You've got to be good negotiators. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's got to be a lot of negotiation with it. And we talk about the import-export banks, and there's so many things going on that have created some problems. You know, with with transferring, and I can't imagine what is going on up here in your head. You have so much. That I would, I was, I wish I was a sponge to grab some of that out of there. But I guess I could read your book. Well, that's right. <laughs> but what I really came here to talk about today, except we don't have much time, is to talk up Schenectady. Yay! Because companies that are looking for a site for a new business talk to people on the street and on the bar, and if they get good words about this is a terrific place to live, or if all they hear are the doomsayers, yeah, or read the papers. Yeah. Now, the Gazette has this one column every yeah, week. Yeah, high notes, and once you were a in week, it, yeah. Once a week, it ought to be every, every day. Every day, there's a lot of good. I have been yes. a cheerleader here for Schenectady and for all my life, but right since I've been doing this show, I've been cheerleading for Schenectady, and I said, this is going to be a great, great town, and, and It's support. Co coming up on 900 programs. I know. Is that, that something? That is terrific. We're looking at probably 10,000 guests. Who knows? <laughs> oh, my God. Someone should write a book. I should write a book. I'll talk to John Briggs, and maybe he